We are so excited to have Marsha and her husband with us today and uh, our visitors, our guests, you're most welcome. We are so looking forward to what God has in store for us here today. Um, Marsha's visit comes at a time of unprecedented violence against children and against the backdrop of tremendous stress on families in South Africa. Just this past week, we had an horrific incident of a four-year-old child being dragged outside a hijacked car to his death. But this is just one of many such incidents of violence against children in our country. Furthermore, the findings contained in several important reports released in the last four years highlight the dire need that families are in in this country. The first, which we're familiar with, the spiritual state of the world's children, revealed inter alia the following. Under the title Family Composition, we were told that 45% of children live with both their natural father and their mother. 23% of parents are divorced, separated, or remarried. In the case of 15%, one parent has died. 5% of children in South Africa have the, the terrible situation that both parents have died. 13% of children live with two parents, one of which is a step-parent, and 11% live with a grandparent. This, of course, doesn't include child-headed households, of which there are many thousands in our country. As far as their relationship with their parents is concerned, 51% spend 15 minutes or less a week talking with their father about things that really matter. 26% spend 15 minutes or less a week talking with their mother about things that really matter. 28% spend 60 minutes or more a week talking with their father about things that really matter. And 59% uh, 49% spend 60 minutes or more a week talking with their mothers about things that really matter. In March 2011, the South African Institute of Race Relations released a research paper entitled Healing the South African Family which examined the state of the South African family in very great detail. Their findings were similarly shocking. It is noteworthy that a total of 3.95 million children had lost one or both parents by 2008, an increase of about a third since 2002. The number of double orphans increased by 144% in the same period. Almost half of all orphans and two-thirds of double orphans were between the ages of 12 and 17 years. The report noted that the United Nations Children's Fund, or UNICEF, estimated that in 2007, some 2.5 two million children in South Africa had lost one or both parents due to all causes. Of these children, more than half had lost one or both parents, as a result of AIDS. Some half a million children had lost both parents as a result of all causes. The report included data from the Medical Research Council in 2002, which predicted that by 2015, some 5.7 million children would have lost one or both parents to AIDS. Some 3.1 million children under 18 years would be maternal orphans, and 4.7 would be paternal orphans. Only 35% of children, according to that report, were living with both their biological parents in 2008. Some 40% were living with their mother only, and 2.8% with their father only, which leaves 22.6% of children who were living with neither of their biological parents. Given the magnitude and critically serious nature of these data, one would have expected South African seminaries 
would have taken urgent steps to recurriculate accordingly. One might have hoped that faculty would have insisted that the seminary introduce appropriate course content designed to teach prospective Christian leaders how to deal with these issues. However, the reality is, in many cases, quite the opposite. Research I conducted last year revealed that at least 12 of the 21 accredited seminaries in South Africa make no reference to, ch to children in their course website descriptions. The other nine, whilst offering a few courses in these fields, do not, on the whole, appear to be equipping their students for the kinds of issues that I've raised this morning. Whether it is because they feel ill-equipped to do so, or perhaps simply reflect an attitude that has unfortunately been prevalent in the church for almost 2,000 years, namely that its focus should mainly be on adults, is arguable. But the net result is that seminary graduates are clearly not trained to deal with something that sadly has become part of everyday life in South Africa. However, I am happy to report that the South African Theological Seminary has made a serious attempt to address the issue through attendance at numerous conferences, organizing two conferences of our own in this area, the appointment of specialists such as Johannes and Willem and Bev as the person in charge of children's ministry at the undergraduate level, um, that we have planned uh, a recurriculation which will see an integrated focus on children across the spectrum at the undergraduate level, that we have masters and doctoral research emphases on children and several students who have either already graduated at the postgraduate level or who are current candidates. We trust that today's presentation would further strengthen the resolve that this institution has in this regard. And Marcia, we truly look forward to your contribution. Thank you.